Right, welcome to Tornado Motorsport. I'm Dave, and this video is all about how to build the comp aluminium components on a Tornado Rookie. Starting with the chassis, and then we're going to show you how to build the bulkhead, the windscreen, the rear tub, and then we'll go on to the front wings, the doors, and the tailgate. I'll show you how to build all them components. Right, so the chassis. First component you really want to put together. Bit of a daunting job for some people, but really it's not bad. Part numbers generally start for all these cross members and out mix and everything at the front and work their way backwards. So, you know, all the front cross member, part of the bumpers zero, zero, 001, going back through all the parts. So if you see a part with a high number on it in the 40s, it'd be more likely the back. The chassis rails are obviously on the high, they're the highest numbers, so don't, don't worry about that. But all the other numbers work backwards through the car. So I start off building the chassis up, each chassis rail. You've got the drawings, as you can see here, which uh, show you where everything overlaps. So you, you need to make sure you put these parts on. Forget these four here when you're building the chassis rails. Um, and don't put rivets when you're building the chassis rail where, where the outriggers go. I build the chassis rails with the outriggers on as I go along. The outriggers and the rear shock mount. But remember the rear shock mount has this cross member across. So if you put any of these rivets in at the front, you have to take them back out. And don't forget, the, the back of the shock mount has got this brace that comes around, which makes that three, three thick, thick like that. Okay. When you put in building the chassis rails, one major important thing you do not want to forget is putting these bushes in here. So inside there is one of them blue bushes. Now, the, the bottom of the chassis, the folded uh, channel, where it's folded by the bushes, sticks out slightly, so that just needs a slight bit of sanding as well, just to make sure the, the chassis is flat against it. Don't put any rivets in the top, apart from the ones you see here on these sills. So there's just that one there at the front outrigger you can put on. Don't put any of the rest in, um, because the floor goes on top of all this lot. So you, any, any I've put in here, you can put in. The ones I haven't, don't put in. I just be drilling them back out. It's not a big job, is it? But it, I'm just trying to make it easy. I bolt on the rear falling top brackets, as you can see there. All them there. So underneath here, you can just see them there. Um, the reason these cross members are different as well for the floor, well for the seat support, that one's plain, that one's got the cutout there for the where the four link comes up, and this one here has got cutouts where it slides down there. Uh, that's why they're all different, you know, they look pretty similar. When I'm building the chassis, I put this cross member in, then that cross member, the floor section and then either work forward or backwards one, one part of the time until you get all the way to the back or front. Chassis number is on this side of the car. This is all the front panel rod set up with the bush. I actually installed the bush as I, as I built this one because it, the sometimes are a bit fiddly to get through the three layers. You see the three layers there, can't you? So you've got that part there there and here all joined together and then you've got the other side the swing pivot over there the other bush goes in there on the part number 16. steering box bracket there bumper has got the back channel into it and then that over there is for your speed controllers you can put that on later if you want. It's a bit fiddly to get the speed controller in there, but I think I think you can do it. So I'd, I'd rather do it before and get it painted with the rest of it. And that's it, really. These three holes here on the chassis that aren't got anything in it are for the tow bar, as well as the three holes underneath. So if you do fit the tow bar, you have to just remove them afterwards. Tow bar is coming available soon. These here mount your bonnet pins on, as well as your front grill. 
and wings bowl bolt through there. So these lugs here, these for the bulkhead flare outwards. Make sure you get them the right way around. Putting this bush in here, you've got the inner inner plate here, and then you've got the outer plate. So I put the inner plate on, push that bush in. It's a little bit tight, so I just rub this down a little bit to get that in, and then put this outer one, which holds it in place. As you can see, again, same with the front bumper. It has crush tubes in there. They aren't mega tight, so they, they can fall out and you can push them back in afterwards, so they're not really that hard to do. Um, at the bottom of the panel rod here, I bolt them to in, as you can see, this side, because it's very hard to get a riveter into them too. If you do make a mistake, it's not hard to drill the rivets out. Just try and get it as good as you can first. But again, it comes with these drawings I showed you earlier. So you should be able to get the main rails pretty well right now. That, that's it for that part. Right, so bulkhead build. We'll have a quick look round so you can see what's happening here. And I'll talk through a couple of points. It's quite a simple one, really. As you can see. Okay, so I build the main two sandwich plates of, of the bulkhead, the one with the serial number and the front face. And if you look, they overlap like that. And generally, the, the, the serial number one goes around the outside of the other one. So it all squeezes together nice, if you can see underneath. And then uh, you've got your steering column brackets that fasten on here. And obviously the front is a footwell. This, this hole, for some reason, is missing out. You just have to drill. It's on this part, but it's not on the bulkhead. So just fasten the rest up and just run your drill through there. Later cars will be edited, but just for now, the suffix will be used like that. Leave all them top row of holes out here because your windscreen fastens there. So you, you, you put the pillars on, make sure the pillars, if you follow the part numbers, they'll be right, but if you don't, make sure the holes offset towards the front for the hinges, as you can see there. You just have to manually curve this and it's cut out between all the bends. When it's fully closed up like that, it's right. And just fold that one out and get these holes to align. You shouldn't have to drill them holes. If you fiddle it right, it will self-align and look like that. Just make sure, you might have to just file slightly these corners so it sits high enough. I just had to play with this one just to make it fit that nice because you want that top hole to be perfect for when you put the rest of it in. Again, that's that side done. Put your interior pedal, brake pedal pivot. Now the part number's upside, upside down on that, because I, I don't know why, but as you can see, it doesn't matter. You just put that like that. Onto the underneath of that part there. Here you've got, you've got the two brake plates. Your pedal comes through here, and then you put the cable through the hole on there, and then in here. So I use the bottom two, one for each wheel, You've got the adjusters with the kit, just but these need slightly drilling out for the adjusters fit in. So if you do that, you can get them adjusters in and that's that's really easy. But I, I'll do the final build of that them parts in another video. Here's your throttle holes for them too, and then that's a wiring there. But other than that, that is the bulkhead done. Very simple part to make. Right, windscreen frame. Simple but a little bit fiddly, right? So a quick walk round so you can see what's happening. So you've got the two, the front plate, the back plate. Again, part numbers on, on the parts. Uh, those two holes are for the bonnet hinges. And these, there's a top and bottom inner section. The, 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 two, the two curves look similar, two plates look similar, but this one here is slightly longer for the bottom because it's a bend back on itself there. Well, it's just a shallower bend at the top. Again, yourself pull them round and let all the holes align. Don't start just drilling these holes out. They do fit, right? I've put this together. I put the back face on first. So I put this, this, this edge on. I joined all the outer edge round. I then put the inner, inner edge to that plate. 
and then put the front face on afterwards. And out of all that lot, a bit of fiddling around, I had to just touch the drill on this one because I was pushing the rivet through and it slightly bent the, the, the plate, the little flange away from me. And once it does that, it stretches it slightly and it wouldn't line up. But apart from that, this is it, ready to go. That's ready to hang straight on the bulkhead. So, dead easy. Onto the rear body. A little bit more fiddly, but not, again, not too bad. Walk around, show you all the, how everything goes together. Okay, so these corner parts, in like that. You've got to make these, the top um, cappings, obviously like this, right? So they're folded, but you have to bend this back corner on itself. It just easily bends by hand, goes in there, and then these just finish off the edge like that. Relatively easy, all this. I did run a 3.2 mil drill bit through these holes first, because some of them are only three mil, my fault. Right, so just, just before you start, just run 3.2 through the whole lot if you can. Just it'll aid put it together. These are tight, these flanges at the bottom to join that, but that's the way round it should go. Right. And that's about all there is really to the rear tub. It's a bit fiddly, like I say, but nothing. Nothing too hard. So the front wing. Quite simple. Now it is just riveted together, but there is holes all the way through, but they are guide because I've had to hand make them wings. They're not always exactly right. So all I do is, is make sure it's as level as possible down these edges. And then if, if the hole's in the right place, it is. If not, I just re-drill it and just, just use it as a guide, really. Now, I put these lugs on the back to match a Land Rover. Now, it turns out they actually hit the foot well. So I, you do, that just needs trimming off flush with here. I'm gonna remove them on the later ones, but it's something I, I didn't look at and I should have looked at, but anyway. Headlight plate there. Don't put these holes in here because they are actually bolts that go through the chassis supports and the, and the front grill. So but apart from that, that's it. Quite good. Okay, so the door. Very simple, these. Quick job. All fits together really well. You can see the top the capping section is longer on the outside than the inside. Both sides are exactly the same part. And hole at the back is for the push button catch, same as the bonnet pins. These are the suffix B features. Enough room for the nut on the back. And the only thing is, when you're assembling it at the front, there is a two mil angle plate that fits inside here. You can just see it's slightly ajar from the holes. It's all fastened in. I'll just touch that with a drill before, before I fasten the door on. That just gives it a stiffening at the front. They're not essential. If you, if you get free at them, I won't worry about it. I just thought it'd be a better bit of strength. That's the door done. Right, tailgate. That's it, really. So you, you've got a back plate as it comes with the folds all the way around the edges. Holes at the top for the bonnet pin style push button catches. Um, you've got the gussets in the corner, fit on there and there. You have man this, this comes as one long strip and you manually just pull it round in the corners so everything lines up. And that's it. I always put the small rivets all round on this edge first and then fasten the out outer edge on afterwards with the bigger rivets. But apart from that, that's it. Shouldn't be any problem with that. Obviously your hinges go on them three holes each side there. Right, that's it. I hope, I hope that cleared a few things up for everyone. And if you do want to buy one of these kits, when some more batches come out, 
you know, you've watched the video, you know what, what's installed for. There is another video coming out, which is going to be for the axle builds, and then a final build of just showing around the completed car to show how the axle's fastened on, etc., etc. So this is part one. There'll be three parts to these, these build videos. The rest coming out in the next couple of weeks. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you.